All right, how's everybody doing out there in Math Magic Land? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and in this video, we're going to take a look at solving logarithmic equations, type 4, quadratic equations that involve the quadratic formula, which means they will not factor. So, let's go ahead and take a look at a quick example. So here's our first problem. We've got log base 3 of x minus 9 plus log base 3 of x minus 3 equaling 2. Now the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and use our properties of logs. Anytime you see adding in between logs and the bases are the same, we can combine those by using multiplication. Now notice our base is 3 in each one of them, so when we combine the x minus 9 and x minus 3 as a product, that's just going to be rewritten as log base 3 times the quantity x minus 9 times the quantity x minus 3, still equaling 2. Now, what I want you to take a look at here is which number is the base. So right here, uh, we've got the base of 3. All right, right there, we had a base of 3, and right there, we had a base of 3. So that's going to come in handy here in a little bit. But first, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a distributive property to work with x minus 9 and x minus 3. Now, when you FOIL that out or use the distributive property, you will end up with the trinomial x squared minus 12x plus 27. And again, our base is 3. Now, if your base is 3, remember, now we're going to use this other x property right here. And the 2, the 2 over here, that's your exponent. So we're going to take log base 3 of that blob, the x squared minus 12x plus 27 equals 2. We're going to take the base, and we're going to rewrite that using the exponent, or the 2. And we're going to, in that process, we're going to get rid of the word or the expression, the L-O-G piece. So that is going to become x squared minus 12x plus 27 equals 3. So notice our exponent is right there. And of course, our base, you know, our base is 3, which is right there as well. And we all know that 3 squared is not 6. Don't say 6. Please don't say 6 because x 3 squared is 9. So x squared minus 12x plus 27 equals 9. Now when you subtract 9 from both sides, you will just end up with x squared minus 12x plus 18 equals 0. Now try as we might, this will not factor nicely. So anytime you have a quadratic, one technique you can always use whenever factoring does not work or you don't see what the factors are right away, you can use the quadratic formula. Now just as a quick reminder, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus uh, b squared minus 4ac, all of that over 2a, so 2 times a. Now our a value, of course, our a value is 1, our b value is negative 12, and then our c value is positive 18. So we're going to use those values and we're going to plug them into the quadratic formula. One step at a time, inch by inch, it will be a cinch. All right, so here's what that is going to look like. That will look like this. So when we plug a, b, and c into our quadratic formula, we'll end up with this expression or this equation here. Now, what you have to be really careful is making sure that we do our multiplying and our, you know, our arithmetic correctly. So you'll end up with x equals 12 plus or minus 144 minus 72. And then when you subtract 72 from 144, you'll get 72 again. So that will give us x equals 12 plus or minus the square root of 72 over 2. Now, moving on, square root of 72, uh, you should be able to recognize that and say, hey, dude, that's like going to be a perfect square factor in there. So 72, uh, some people think about it like a factor tree. So the biggest perfect square number that goes into 72, of course, is 36. And 36 goes into 72 twice. So that would then end up making this turn into 12 plus or minus square root of 36 times square root of 2, and some people may be able to skip that step because you can do that mentally and then just go right ahead and write that as x equals 12 plus or minus 6 square root of 2 all over 2. Now here's what I want you to notice next. When you take a look at all of these values, so I want you to take a look at the 12, the 6, and the 2. Now you're going to ignore the square root of 2 because we're not going to pay attention to that. Sorry, square root of 2, you get left out. Now 12, 6, and 2, the number that goes into all three of those terms, of course, is 2. So if I divide each one of those by 2, I will be left with x equals 6 plus or minus 3 square root of 2. Now what this means is that I have two answers. One, of course, is negative and one is positive. So of the two answers, 6 plus 3 square root of 2 and x equals 6 minus 3 square root of 2, how do I know if they're right? 
I'm not sure. So here's how we can test this intuitively, and then I'll show you in another video how to check that using a graphing calculator. So intuitively, we know, so let's go back up to uh, this piece right here, the blop next to the word log base 3. And over here, log base 3. We know the domain restriction for the logarithmic function. That blop that's in the middle right there, that's highlighted in pink, uh, has to be greater than 0. It has to be positive. So if I take either one of these, now let's just kind of estimate 6 plus 3 squared to 2. Now, 3 squared to 2, if I ignore the square root of 2, that would just be the number 3. Now, of course, 3 times the square root of 2, that's going to be a little bit bigger than 3. How much bigger? I don't know right now, and I don't really care. So if I just take a look at 6 plus square root of 3, three square root of 2, 6 plus 3 gives me 9. So 6 plus 3 square root of 2, that's going to have to be a little bit more than 9. So if I have a little bit more than 9, minus 9, this value in x minus 9 for log base 3 of x minus 9, that part's going to be positive. And then if I do the same thing over with the x minus 3 part, log base 3 of x minus 3, that's also going to be positive. So I know this value works right here. 6 plus 3 square root of 2. Now let's go uh, and take a look at 6 minus 3 square root of 2. So if I do, again, estimate 3 square root of 2 to be a little bit more than 3, maybe, but maybe it's around 4-ish. Um, so 6 minus, if we even just leave it at 3, 6 minus 3 would give us 3. So if I put in 3 right here to the x minus 3 part, this piece, 3 minus 3, that gives us 0. And it can't be 0 in there. It's got to be greater than 0. And if I put 3 in here, 3 minus 9 is a number smaller than 0, which again cannot be. So this part right here, I'm sorry, thank you for playing, but 6 minus 3 squared to 2, you are extra extraneous. So extraneous solution for that, because that happens when we get a value for x, but it does not work. So that's an extraneous solution, which does not work. So our only solution for this is x equals 6 plus 3 squared to 2. Now come on back in the next video, and I'll show you how to verify that on your TI graphing calculator. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll catch up with you guys later. Have a great day. Peace out.